Okay, so now let's talk about the architecture of the use case. So here uh, you see an edge location uh, with a camera uh, that's providing multiple uh, so video streams uh, and it's uh, a USB camera that's connected directly to the Jetson Nano. Now um, you see two different video feeds. So uh, what, what those mean is in the live video feed, uh, the camera is pointed towards a parking lot and uh, it's able to detect uh, whatever objects are there in the stream and it's providing it uh, to the Jetson Nano. Uh, in the second one, uh, the CAN video feed. So uh, in that case, uh, a video is playing on a monitor and uh, the camera is pointed towards that monitor and it's recording those streams and then sending it to uh, the Jetson Nano. Now let's talk about the right-hand side. So in, on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, <clears throat> These platforms run a flavor uh, called uh, L40 or Linux for Tegra that's based on uh, Ubuntu 18.04. And uh, this operating system along with the CUDA uh, X drivers, uh, so we, uh, here we have the CUDA 10.2, comes um, as an SDK um, and is packaged into what's called a Jetpack. So uh, which is, a, uh, it's a comprehensive uh, software stack uh, for the Jetson family uh, of uh, products, in this case, Jetson Nano, uh, and has uh, all these dependencies and libraries built in. And we are using the Jetpack version 4.4. Uh, then we have deployed a K3S cluster, uh, but before that we have to use NVIDIA container runtime. So NVIDIA introduced that with uh, uh, Jetpack 4.2, and it's a container runtime that can take advantage of uh, the GPUs that are running uh, that are part of the Jetson uh, family of products. So, and uh, eventually we have the DeepStream L4T containers deployed as pods uh, on these K3S clusters. And we'll see the live demo on how that's done. Okay. So now, okay, yeah. So this is the uh, environment setup. So here, uh, you see four uh, nanos. So for this use case, we are just using one, but this is part of the entire setup that we have. Um, and it's a Jetson Nano developer kit, um, one uh, barrel jack, five volt, uh, uh, five volt, uh, four amperes power supply, uh, one GPPS ethernet switch, uh, UTP and ethernet cables for connectivity uh, to these nanos. Uh, the webcam that I talked about, the camera is connected to the nanos uh, with the USB. Uh, then is a display that's attached to Jetson Nano via HDMI. So uh, we can see uh, uh, when it detects any objects and what, what's happening in the video frames. And uh, we are using the DeepStream SDK 5.0 version. So now, all right, so now it's time uh, for the demo. What we're going to see is, uh, first of all, uh, we've connected to the Jetson Nano, and here we are going to uh, see what is the versions of the softwares, and then um, we are going to uh, quickly install a K3S cluster on top of it, uh, then deploy the Jetson uh, uh, DeepStream uh, L4T containers, and then um, we'll see how they uh, execute on, uh, and how they detect the ob uh, um, objects and uh, do, does video analytics. So here, let me just go quickly um, and show you the versions. So <clears throat> here um, we see that the Jetson Nano uh, developer kit we are using uh, L40 and the Jetpack 4.4. Um, CUDA version is 10.2 uh, as we talked about and um, uh, it's based on Ubuntu 18.04. <clears throat> so now, Right. So this is just a um, Docker um, version and info rather that what's the runtime. So right now uh, <clears throat> the default runtime is run C uh, and the available one is uh, NVIDIA as well. So we are going to change it to uh, NVIDIA container runtime uh, in the Docker uh, daemon file so that uh, uh, when we deploy K3S, we can uh, use that runtime. So it's a simple uh, one line change. <clears throat> right so now we've changed the default runtime we are now going to start restart docker and all right 
So now the default runtime uh, is changed to uh, NVIDIA. Uh, I'll just install curl uh, because uh, this is the first time um, uh, we are doing it from the scratch. So here, so all right, so this is done. All right, so now we'll install um, K3S um, on top of this and uh, here, so while this is running, I'll explain. So uh, K3S by default comes with uh, container D uh, as its runtime, but uh, it allows you to uh, change the container runtime uh, to Docker uh, and uh, you can use to, um, uh, you can install the K3S and point it to your existing runtime. So it will uh, let you do that. So with this install uh, underscore K3S exec, uh, we have uh, specified um, Docker and uh, we know that uh, internally we have changed it and pointed it to NVIDIA container runtime. That's the default one uh, in place of run C. So uh, it happens pretty quick, uh, but uh, maybe it's taking a while. So while it's downloading, um, we see that it, it's uh, we are using the uh, 18.9 uh, version of K3S uh, here, uh, the stable release, and it is already uh, starting K3S on top of it. So, okay, all right, so now that's done. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the key using kubectl, the version uh, of the nodes, and we see that it, uh, it has deployed uh, 1.18.9, uh, the stable release of it. And it's based on ARM64, since we are doing it on JITS and NANA. All right, so now let's see, all right, so, um, what we are doing here is uh, we are executing um, a default or a uh, yeah a default container, which uh, the uh, device query, which will tell us if uh, uh, it's able to access these GPUs uh, uh, on this Jetson Nano. So since we've installed K3S uh, on top of it. And now uh, we have run this uh, sample container, uh, the device query. So it will tell us whether it's able to access uh, this um, uh, GPUs uh, from the Nano. So if you see it detected one CUDA capable device, uh, NVIDIA Tegra, and now uh, it says the result is pass. So that means that it, and it also uh, tells us what are the different uh, um, so like CUDA driver versions, uh, how much is the GPU max clock rate, uh, the L2 cache size, warp size, and et cetera, et cetera. So now, uh, uh, since it has done that, and uh, it says, I mean, the result is passed, so it's able to detect that uh, uh, device and the GPUs. All right, so now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, create a YAML file. Um, so let's do that. No. Okay. So here, let me, all right. So uh, let's pause here for a second. So, okay. So let's uh, take a look at the YAML file for a sec. So uh, this is the, um, the image that we are using is uh, the DeepStream L40 uh, container image uh, that's available, uh, one of the many. Uh, so it's a sample image that we are using and we are uh, we have deployed it in the K3S cluster. So uh, when we uh, create it as a pod um, and deploy it as a YAML file, uh, it will automatically uh, pull and run that container. And uh, then we'll be able to query it and then do object detection, right? So this is the YAML file uh, for it. And now let's out and right, so let's clear this thing everything and now we will just apply the spot all right so it takes doesn't take a while um, all right so if we do get pods we'll see that the uh, demo pod is now running uh, the other one uh, that it shows is the one that we ran earlier so now right, so we are going to go in the container uh, we are going to unset the display since it keeps looking for uh, a display uh, even before it runs. And uh, that's why we, we need to do that. And now 
Uh, and now we are going to uh, run this uh, deep stream app with, um, so the config file or the sample file that we're using is source one uh, towards the end, USB uh, infrared snet intake, because uh, that's the one that is available uh, since we are using a USB camera, right? So the error that you see uh, at the top is uh, deserialized engineering failed. Uh, that's because it, uh, it tries to look for the ionate engine um, that's for the uh, Xavier family uh, of Jetsons, uh, but uh, then it switches to uh, FV16 since it, uh, um, it's a nano, right? So that, that's just something that uh, you observed. All right, so once it that, does that, <clears throat> Uh, we are going to see that uh, the uh, container is running and it says uh, pipeline is running, right? So now, uh, now it's running. So we are going to see how it detects the objects and how it uh, runs all of this uh, and does the analysis, right? So um, I'm going to switch to another video and it's a handheld recording, so two of them. Uh, and um, we'll see uh, the live uh, feed that we talked about um, and the already running video and the camera is capturing uh, that running video, right? So I'm going to switch over, over to that. Okay, so this is the uh, video and it's a handheld thing. So it will show us uh, the pipeline running and uh, let me play it out. All right, so it shows that the pipeline is running and now um, it goes to uh, here, so let me pause it. Yeah, so it shows that uh, it's a, a, uh, aimed towards the parking lot. So it shows that there is a car uh, and uh, uh, it's able to detect that. So this is the HDMI display. And uh, we also see the camera that's uh, pointed towards the parking lot, right? And if you see a little closer and we didn't plan that, but there is a diff second car that's uh, in the background. So if I take it a bit behind, yeah. So we pointed it towards the parking lot. So it's able to take this one. And uh, uh, I didn't see that there is another one here also. So it's able to detect that as well, right? Uh, now this is the live video feed uh, that it was uh, running towards or rather uh, the camera is pointed towards the parking lot. So it's able to detect it. And now we are going to see another one uh, where it uh, uh, the video is playing on a monitor and the camera is pointed towards that and how it behaves, right? Okay, so this is the second one uh, here again. Uh, you see that um, the containers is running uh, when it shows uh, and it's able to uh, detect some of the frames. Now let's see what's happening uh, here. So this is the um, in setup that we saw earlier. Uh, these are all the devices, but right now we have connected it to only a single one. Uh, it's connected via USB. Uh, <clears throat> and so this is the video that's running on, on the screen and uh, our camera is pointed towards this uh, monitor. So there are a lot more uh, um, analysis that needs to happen, but it's still all happening in the same thing. So it's a busy street. So you see lots of people uh, that are uh, going and, uh, uh, and if you see it closer here, uh, it's almost like no lag. So these are the two screens that you see. One is where it's recording and here is where uh, it's able to show and detect the objects. So uh, let's see what happens on uh, this side. So it's a busy street with different types. I mean, there are people, uh, there are cars, buses and things like that. So, and this is the display. So it's able to detect that there is a person, there's a car that's going in. Uh, even uh, the, all these uh, things it's able to detect pretty seamlessly. So, um, this actually uh, makes a compelling argument and all of this is running uh, on a K3S cluster and with these um, NVIDIA DeepStream uh, containers that are running and it's taking advantage of all the GPUs that are available through the ejection family of things, right? So uh, this concludes the demo.